Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Amen. Let's look at John and chapter. Uh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and look at John 14. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip. You know, I took a rock and throw them, see where it hits. <laughs> hallelujah. In John chapter 14, starting verse 15, it says, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, another, <laughs> another advocate. Advocate means somebody that's on your side. You're going to go through life where a lot of people are not going to be on your side. There's going to be times in your life where you're going to think nobody's on your side. But rest assured, because of what the Word of God says, you'll always have God on your side. That doesn't mean he agrees with everything that we say and do. He's just on our side. Amen. So he is a, a, another advocate to help you. In other words, another, another advocate means Jesus is our advocate. He's on our side. But he's sending another advocate. Somebody else that's going to be on our side. Amen. 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 The spirit of truth. Hallelujah. We are now in the world, this world system. It is a war on truth. Everything's about a war on truth, trying to cover up the truth, and we are here to expose the truth. Amen? Amen? But he is the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you. In other words, he already lived with them. He was living with them. Amen? Amen. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. In you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And then in verse 25, it says, All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the one that's on your side, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Why? Because we forget so easily. I'll tell you, you're going to be a humdinger service and God talks to you and everything's changed and a week later you're like, oh, what was that? <laughs> but he's the reminder. Amen? Amen? Now let's look in chapter 15 going to the verse 26. We're just going to point out some things that Jesus, our advocate, our Savior, our Lord, our Master, Amen. The soon coming king. Some of the things that he said about another advocate. And in verse 15, verse 26, it says, When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. He's talking to his disciples. But then in chapter 16, uh, going down to verse 7, it says, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good. It is for your good. Could you imagine in the day of walking with Jesus, being one of his disciples, being one of the chosen ones, walking with Jesus day and night, you know? Going camping every day with Jesus. But he said, It is good for, it is for your good that I am going away. That, I'm sure, made absolutely zero sense. It's good for you. It's more better for you that I leave. <laughs> he says, it's more better for you, but he says, unless I go away, the advocate, the other advocate I was telling you about, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Amen? About sin, because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Amen. I have so, I have much more to say to you. More than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, 
just when that he keeps saying the same thing, the spirit of truth, the advocate. <laughs> when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Remember, Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say, and only do right. what I see him do. So he will glorify me because it is from me that he, it is from me that he will receive what he will make known unto you. And that belongs to the Father, all that belongs to the Father is mine. Everything belongs to Jesus. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So think about it. Jesus goes to the Father, and then the Father sends the Holy Spirit to us, and the Holy Spirit tells us everything that Jesus has to say. <laughs> Amen? And we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. It's a cycle that we'll never, that we don't ever get away from. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us, and Jesus sends the Holy Ghost. Amen? And it comes from the Father. Hallelujah. You're like, oh, I've heard this a million times. That means you need to hear it again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As soon as we think we've heard it all. Now, we're going to go to book, the book of Acts in chapter 1. Hallelujah. Chapter 1. We're going to read the red letters because that's what Jesus said. Because we're talking about the same subject here. And we're speaking in Acts chapter 1. And we're going to start verse 4 where it says, On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, not a suggestion like the church might think, but he gave a command. Amen? A command. A command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the dates. The Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power. You will receive power. You will receive power. Amen? Amen. Not before, but after. You will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in uh, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen? Amen? So he did not suggest, but he said, don't leave home without him. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So he described, I told y'all about him, I told you he was coming, I told you it's more better for you than he that I leave so he can come for you. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And not just live with you, but live in you. So, for people to think in the church, in this day and age, or any day and age, that we don't need the Holy Ghost, and we don't need to speak in tongues, is doctrinally incorrect. Doctrines of demons. Don't you think it's the devil that does not want anybody yes. to pray in tongues? When Jesus himself said, don't leave until the Holy Spirit yes. comes and falls on you, because when he comes, yes. he will bring you... Power. No Holy Ghost, no power. Just a magic show. Amen? God never meant the church, his church, to be without power. It was said from the beginning, Christ in us. Christ is not Jesus' last name. The epistles are not the wives of the apostles. Christ is not his last name. It's his description. He is Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. So when we receive the Holy Ghost, we are his anointed ones. When Jesus went in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights without eating, fasting, and praying, when the enemy came to him, he said it was written. And when he returned, he returned full of the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. So why would we think that we could do any more or better, more better, without the power. Right. That's true. 
Amen. How much Jesus Christ told, kept tell, teaching them and telling them all about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's responsibility and what he was going to do and who he was. Amen. And what he was going to say and how he was going to lead them. And then before he ascended in, the, in, in Acts, before he ascended on high, the last thing he told them was, don't leave until the Holy Ghost comes. Yes. Amen. 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 So we can see in the rest of Acts chapter 1, they tried to do a few things. <laughs> they was trying. They was trying to do a couple of things. Amen. But one thing they did do, they were obedient to Jesus. You know, sometimes we can miss it in some of the small things. But let's not make it, let's, let's not miss it in the big things. Yeah, which good. is the Holy Ghost is the big thing. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is the spirit of the living God. And without the Holy Ghost, we can do nothing. Yes. User-friendly church is a church without God. Because the Holy Spirit has been given to us. So that we would have God now, Amen. in this time. Amen. Not talk about a time to come, yes. but now right. we got the Holy Ghost. Yes. And we have him for a reason to lead us and guide us to be, be our advocate to counsel us. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how, how much of the church doesn't have an understanding of the counsel. The counselor lives in us for a reason. To counsel us from going out of the will of God. And to counsel us into the middle of the will of God. There's only one will for God. And you know, people say, well, I'm in God's permissive will. That ain't his will. That's your will. The counselor has one plan and purpose. And that's to be in the will of God. To live by the word of God. To live in the power of God. Amen. Amen. So we can easily see that Jesus, the king of glory, the head of the church, is speaking even 2,000 years later the importance of the Holy Ghost. He has a lot of different descriptions. And there's a reason because we need so many things in his life. He is the deliverer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's the presence of the almighty God in us. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. And he will direct us to all the things that Jesus did for us. He paid the price. Amen. Amen. To give us a counselor. To counsel us into the will of God. Yes. So, so we have to make sure that we are listening to the counselor so that we will know what the will of God is. We've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour. We have to know what the truth is, and the only way you can know the truth is by knowing the Spirit of truth. Amen? Amen. We'll have the church trying to talk us out of the Holy Ghost. Doctrines of demons. I love when somebody judges, well, I don't really believe that God always heals. Well, let me see if I'd rather believe you or believe what the Word of God says. Oh, that's right. Jesus paid the price yes. that we will have divine healing. Yes. So why would I believe you if you tell me that God wants me sick? Right. His child. Like you're so sanctified. <laughs> mortified <laughs> that you want your children sick how much better of a God that we serve we don't want our kids sick or we're going without how much better is God so much so that he gave us his spirit to live in us to lead us and guide us and counsel us into truth amen, amen. he is the counselor and in this day and hour that, that thing just keeps coming to me about about the children of God having a relationship with the counselor. That means he's going to tell you to do some things you don't want to do. <laughs> I was getting out of the car tonight. <laughs> I'm getting out of the car and I'm like, how do I get myself into these things? <laughs> how did I get myself into this? <laughs> I could have been sitting watching the sunset. What am I doing? <laughs> 
Amen? Amen. But instead, <laughs> 45 years ago, I somehow, an accident, was reading the Bible and I said, God, whatever's in here, that's what I want for my life. So God has reminded me many times over the years, he'll say, but you said that you would do anything. <laughs> and I take a big swallow and I'm, yes, sir. <laughs> Whatever you want. You're my savior. I, I can't pay the price for my sins. So God was very serious when he sent Jesus so that Jesus could pay the price. It said that he came to give us life. Life abundantly. He came to make us vessels. You know, it says, you know, Jesus was explaining about the old vessel, the old wine vessel, and the new wine vessel. Well, the new wine vessel holds the new wine, and the old wine vessel holds the old wine. So when you get the new wine vessel, when you get born again, and your earthen vessel becomes a vessel for the new wine. So you don't put old wine in new wine skins because they'll burst. Something's going to get a miss. And you can't put new wine, you can't put a Holy Ghost in somebody that's not saved. I mean, a lot of times people think, you know, you can drink. Well, it's putting old wine in a new wineskin. It's no different than trying to get somebody that's not even saved filled with the Holy Ghost. First, they got to become a new wineskin. Yeah. And you do that by the... I'm just reading the word. Yeah. People sometimes don't like I'm saying. I was like, well, it's, it's in the Bible. <laughs> don't blame me. <laughs> We're priests and kings unto the Lord most high. So now let's look at um, Acts chapter 2. How important, how important it is in this day, in this hour, that we have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because we have to understand no Holy Ghost, no glory. No glory, no manifestation of God. Zero. Zilch. The church was made, created by God, to be a vessel we are individual vessels, but the church itself is a vessel full of God's power and glory. Yes, yes. But where, 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 oh, where, oh, where has it been? Amen. How vitally important it is for the glory of God to be made to be made manifest. the the word The word glory came from a Greek word. I mean, this might even sound kind of what again? I don't know. It might sound a little Hawaiian or pigeon. I don't know. Cabo. <laughs> it was the word cabo. The word glory. It's a Greek word. The word glory basically just means abundance. God's glory is abundant. His presence. The, God, the glory of God is a manifestation of his presence. Because God is everywhere all the time. I don't care what side of the island, north, south, east, west. I don't care which island. I don't care if you're male or female, short, tall, dark or light. It's irrelevant. The presence of God is everywhere. Amen. You go over to the uh, Nepali coast, nobody there, God be there. That's right. God is everywhere all the time. But he is not always manifesting himself. We need the glory in a manifestation of God in the church in this hour. Yes. That means we need the Holy Ghost to show up and he ain't going to show up. He ain't going to show up unless we are being counseled in following after him. We can't just do it our way. Every part of it has to be him. Every, he, he's not obligated to anybody or anything. We, if we want a demonstration of God in this hour, let me just say it should have been right from the beginning, signs, wonders, and miracles should be the note of the church. When people know those are Christians. Those are Christians because they live holy and they have signs, wonders, and miracles. Mom, you look on TV or YouTube, you look at the church and you think they got dancers, they got wide screens, skinny jeans and fog machines <laughs> and no glory yeah. no power no manifestation of the presence of a living God who loves people instead yeah. mankind trying to do it their way to bring glory to themselves amen, amen. 
<laughs> building their own castles, and they call it my ministry. I was wondering when somebody says my ministry. Well, if it's yours, <laughs> I don't know if I want to have a part of it. The ministry of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not my ministry. The church that I pastor in California is not my church. It's God's church. You can at any time. I've been pastoring 27 years or whatever. <laughs> it all becomes a blur. <laughs> the closer you get to 70, you're like, how did this happen? <laughs> I went to bed and I got up and I went to bed and I got up and I went to bed and I got up. <laughs> Amen? It's God is looking for a few good men and women. And God really doesn't care what anybody has to say. He's just looking what anybody wants to do. Wants to do. People say a lot of things. People say, I do a lot. And then they don't. In the book of Acts, chapter 2 now, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. That means they were unified and they were in one place with one common cause and one purpose. And that was to be obedient to what Jesus told them. Don't go anywhere until you get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now let me just say, they hadn't been to a Holy Ghost meeting. <laughs> they had no idea what it was going to look like. All they knew it was a person. <laughs> but they didn't know it was going to be a ghost. It's like they thought he's going to come in like Jesus. So he's going to come knocking on the door. And we'll let him in. And, he, and he's the new advocate. And now he's going to join our group. We're, they didn't know what they were <laughs> They didn't have the New Testament. They didn't understand these things. Because the Holy Spirit had come. He's the spirit of revelation. They just did almost blindly what Jesus told them to do. Wait. So it's like, well, I guess we'll pray while we're waiting. They didn't pray, and they didn't when they when they were praying, they weren't praying in tongues. They were just glorifying God, thanking God, and then worship. How were they know? They were just waiting on God. But in chapter two, it says suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting, and they yeah. saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. So in other words, because sometimes people struggle in praying with tongues. Number one, it is absolutely the will of God that every child of God pray in tongues. Yes. They go, well, you know, maybe it's not the will of God for me. There are two different types of tongues. One is your own personal prayer language. You can worship God in tongues. And the word of God says when you speak in tongues, you're speaking unto God. And there's also a tongue that is a gift of the Holy Spirit, which is for public use, where somebody might say, that will express the very words of God from heaven. What God wants said at that moment and in that place and to those people. Yeah. An expression of the Holy Ghost yeah. that needs an interpretation yeah. as I'm speaking right now. It's a tongue and interpretation is equivalent to a prophecy. Amen? It's a spiritual utterance of the Holy Ghost. Amen? So we have to understand when the day of Pentecost came, they were just in obedience and all of a sudden <laughs> they did not know what it was going to look like. I've been through a, different, a few different waves. You know, I got saved in like 75, so I've seen a few waves come and go. I feel like a surfer. A spiritual surfer. Wait for another set. <laughs> It's been like 20 years of just sitting on my board out in the water, just waiting for anything to happen. Where, where it seemed as if user-friendly churches were taking over the world with their skinny jeans, fog machines, and big screen TVs. It seemed like they were taking over with no power. It's like, this should not be. This should not be in my little corner. This should not be. There's no Holy Ghost. They don't even talk about Jesus. They don't talk about walking in holiness. No. And they try to say, 
say grace is all you can live any old way you want. Grace is not living all any, any old way you want. Grace is the power of God on you to do what's right. Yes. Yes. That's what the word says. Yes. So we have a little corner of people that want to speak the truth. We'll get louder. We get louder. A remnant. God always go to all the way to the beginning. God always uses a remnant. Yes. True. Amen. Amen. You know, back in the day when uh, they were wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years because of uh, a lack of faith, all these younger people that were raised with miracles, signs and wonders, seeing what God did, they're like, oh, God can do anything. Like Joshua and Caleb, oh, yeah, God can do this. And the old folks are like, oh, we better not. <laughs> you know, the ones that came out of Egypt with a grand exit in the fire of God and the part of the Red Sea and all of that stuff and manna from heaven and water from a rock and they're like, well, I don't know if God can do it. So God knows exactly what to do with those that are in unbelief. He opens the earth. I don't know. You know, it's like now you've got so many people and so many families that have one belief and one, you know, or politics and all this other stuff. God knows how to open the earth just under those that don't believe. I was like, he's very crafty. He's like, I gotta get rid of the unbelievers. So the earth shook, an earthquake came, and opened up and only swallowed those that were unbelief. God knows what he's doing. He doesn't need our help. He yeah. just needs our obedience. Yeah. Amen. He just needs us to be obedient. You know, like a lot of times people pray that will say, Well, you know, I don't know if I should pray for people because what if they don't get healed? I never heal. I I prayed for people that were raised from the dead. I prayed for people that were on their deathbeds and went and prayed for them. No feeling left. The next day they were on Facebook. <laughs> it's like, oh really? Where's your Bible? <laughs> You're on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I mean, I prayed for a lot. Let me just say, I prayed for them, but I didn't heal a one. Yeah. I never healed anybody. I never tend on healing anybody. I'm not going to gloat about anything that God's ever used me for because I was just an earthen vessel. <laughs> yeah. Earthen vessel with the Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost, nothing. Right. We just got to stay focused on what Jesus said in the very beginning. Don't go anywhere without the Holy Ghost. We have, we have a right to be refreshed at church. We have a right to be refreshed in our homes. We have a right to be refreshed in the presence of Almighty God. And the presence of God is everywhere but we there's things that we must do for a manifestation yeah. Yeah. of the presence of God Amen. God's here the Holy Spirit's here but he wants to manifest himself you know manifest means you know say for instance you know my husband could be sleeping you know and he's laying there sleeping I know he's there but he's just sleeping so he's not manifesting at all. And then all of a sudden, and then I'm like, oh, he's manifesting himself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, manifestation of my husband right now. He's manifesting himself. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what he, give him the old elbow. <laughs> no, I just give him the little roll. Just roll. Not to wake him up, just to roll him up. <laughs> we all have different manifestations. You know, then he gets up and he's making his coffee. Now he's really manifesting himself. Amen? He's up, he's doing stuff. We need a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit to, to make some noise. Yes. Yes. We need the Holy Spirit to make some movement, yes. to display some power. Yes. Amen. We need signs, wonders, and miracles because that's exactly what he came for. Yes. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah, I get so tired of it. Well, women can't. You're the, wrong, you're the wrong audience. Go someplace else then. Right. <laughs> Go listen to Bill Gates. See what he has to say. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. So then in verse 14, it says that Peter stood up with a... Just for the sake of time, you can read the rest of that too because they uh, thought they had too much wine. Because they had... Now their vessels were Holy Ghost vessels and now they got filled with the new wine. You act different when you have a little wine. Let me just say, Christians have been miserable.
culture, but I get around Christians and I think, jeez, you need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't talking about <coughs> rotten fruit. <laughs> I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. You need a dose of the Holy Ghost because yeah. you are awful. <laughs> hour a day. <laughs> I mean, just, just taking one hour out of the day to decide to be happy yeah. on wings and tacos and whatever else comes with it. I mean, seriously, the world says, we need a happy hour. Right after work, we're going to go get happy. The church is like, I'm just going home and grumble and complain. The Holy Ghost is the new wine, and he's given to us so that we can have a happy hour. Every hour. Amen. All the moves of God that I've seen. I've seen moves of God for back in the, in the 70s where I got saved in the, the tail end of the hippie movement, the Jesus movement, the charismatic move. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost and didn't even know what they're doing. They're praying in tongues, and I was like, I don't know what this is. You get all these people born again, know nothing about the Bible, trying to rip it up with no foundation. <laughs> we were all over the place. <laughs> Rebuking everything and everybody. <laughs> Casting demons out of her. <laughs> we were like crazy. And then and then God started this teaching move. Right, right on the heels of it. I mean that that move did not. That charismatic move wasn't even ending, and the teaching move had already started. I know a lot of people are anti-faith. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. I'm anti-faith message. I go, well, you'll never get saved. Because <laughs> right. you're saved by faith. Right. <laughs> well, I don't believe in that faith stuff. I was like, okay, then you'll never get saved. Because <laughs> you have to have faith to get saved. If you want to please God, you got to have faith. Because it's impossible to please God without faith. Yeah. The just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. you got a faith problem. you got a God problem. It was so imperative that somebody would be raised up and go and teach God's people faith. Not the world. God's people, we need to know what faith was and how to get it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Oh, so that's what happened to the faith. <laughs> it comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Some Christians just stop hearing the word of God. No faith, no word, no word, no faith. Amen? Yeah. Everything we do is by faith. How can you be against a faith message? You've been listening to the wrong people. <laughs> and so God raised up people to teach his people faith. What faith is, how to acquire faith, how to strengthen your faith, how to live by faith, how to operate in faith. That was God, not man. And so then, then all of a sudden in the, in the mid-70s, it kind of started this big movement of faith. Well, I'll tell you, you go to Maiden's there lining up a mile down the road just to get in there and hear somebody teach the Bible. I don't know what happened there, but back in the 80s, I'm telling you, we go to, we go to meetings, uh, and people would get out of the morning meeting and get in line to go to the night meeting. And they'd have their little sandwich. God forbid if you try to cut in line because they take your head off with their umbrella. <laughs> By faith. By faith, I'm going to be the first one in this room. <laughs> I'm serious. You'd have hundreds of people lining up to get into an auditorium to hear them teach the Bible. Right. right. Now people are like, oh, I heard all that stuff before. Well, you apparently didn't hear it right. Amen. Sorry. Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> Amen. And so, so we have to understand the Holy Spirit, the reason he's here. If there is, if there is no Holy Ghost, there is no church. It's just a social club. We've got enough social. Yeah. Social indifference. Socialism. Social distance. Social distance. They always try to make a problem. Social media. They try to make it sound 
good, like it's social. It's yeah. so, so, so social. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? We are in an hour where the church of the living God has got to be filled with the yes. Holy Ghost and power. Yes. Because that is how we display to the world who our God is and what Woo. he can do. No yes. Holy Ghost, no church. No Holy Ghost, no power. No power, no church. God came. Let, let, let's look at verse 16. 2.16, no, this is what was spoken about the prophet Joel, by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. If you would talk to some Christians, you'd think you have to be a part of a special group. Or you can only be a man. Or you can only be in this church. Yeah. And they will, there's denominations that are talking people out of the Holy Ghost. Forgive them, Lord. <laughs> Forgive them, Lord. <laughs> In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Amen. Because it's not about the gender. It's about the same Holy Ghost. You know, I used to care about people. People thought about that. But, you know, after, after a couple decades, you... You better quit. <laughs> I remember the last time I'd go to God, oh God, you know, somebody's coming against me because I'm a woman and I can't even help it. That's just the way I was born. <laughs> oh God, help me. <laughs> and he, I'd like, God, just show me words. Just show me scriptures. Then he'd show me and he'd show me. Then I'd be fine for six months and then I'd start whining again. And then he'd show me some scriptures. And then, I, you know, a year go by and then I'm whining again. And, and then he'd show me. And then all of a sudden one time I was like, God. And he's like, don't ever come to me about this subject again. <laughs> And I was like, okay. <laughs> Whatever, Holy Ghost and fire! <laughs> Even on your servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy, and I'll show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke and sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great glorious day of the Lord. <laughs> Things are going to get real ugly yeah. on this planet. People are like, yeah, but we're going to be out of here before it starts. Hey, listen, if you lived in Afghanistan, it's already pretty ugly right there. Yeah. And there's Christians being killed, yeah. murdered for their faith. Yeah. The problem with the U.S. is we think we're exempt from persecution. We felt, felt a little of it about a year and a half ago knocking on our doors. <laughs> Shut it down. And some did and some didn't. <laughs> Amen? Amen? God has a plan. For man. And if you were called into any type of ministry, whether it's a worship leader, a preacher, a teacher, a pastor, an evangelist, whatever, evangelists aren't in the church, evangelists aren't out on the streets, because evangelists are with sinners. <laughs> you don't evangelize the church, even though sometimes it looks like you might need to. <laughs> Amen? But if you were called by God, you were called by God from, the, from your mother's womb. And a lot of people don't do what God called them to do. Because they don't listen to the counselor. He's a counselor. Amen. He's a counselor. He'll tell you, don't go that way. You need to be going this way. Don't take that job. You need to have this job. You need to not hang around with those people. Yes, I love them. But they're not good for you. It's more better for you to hang around here. I remember when I first was going to church, you know, I was like, I, I found this church. I knew it was God. Powerful church, man. Just powerful. Holy Ghost. It was awesome. And I, I started going to that church, and I'm looking around for who, the, who my people are, who I'm going to hang around with, you know, who I'm going to kick it with, who the cool bunch is, you know, because I'm cool, so i got to find the cool people. I, did, I couldn't find them. <laughs> it was all these strange people just loving God and on fire for God, and I'm thinking, that's the only thing I have in common with these people. And then I'd hang around with them and be with them, go out to eat and talk about God, and all of a sudden I forgot about all the uncoolness that my flesh thought was supposed to be cool, and I started realizing, these are the cool people. They know God. They know the Holy Ghost. And they got the fire. These people are cool. Amen? 
So what did I do? God said, cut off those other ones and you stay with this. more better for you if you hang around these Holy Ghost people. Amen? Amen. Amen. The counselor. The one with the power. The spirit of truth. The one that's on your side. People think, oh, God just wants to keep me from having fun. No, he doesn't want to keep you from having fun. Amen? Amen. He wants you to have the power. He wants you to, to live and operate in power, not in confusion or uncertainty or oppression and depression, but with joy and peace yes. and gladness and power. Amen. And power. power. Amen. Amen. You pray for the sick, there's not a doubt. When God says pray for somebody, let me just say, God's not going to tell you to pray for every single person. But the counselor will tell you who to pray for. And when he tells you to pray, he's going to move. Amen? He'll tell you what to say. He'll tell you what to do. He is the spirit of the living God. That's right. That's true. And he lives in us. Say, I have, I have the spirit of God, the spirit of, God. The spirit of power, the spirit of, power. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. He's, on my side. he's on my side. Always. Always. Even when I mess up. Even when I mess up. When I say stupid stuff. When I did something wrong, he's still on my side to counsel me out of my mess. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost and fire. God wants to manifest a manifestation of the glory of God. It's called a manifestation of of the glory of God. That means a manifestation of too much. God wants to manifest himself with too much. Not just enough, but too much. Why would God want you to have too much? Because he wants you to have enough for you and enough to give away. People want to make a vow of poverty. Well, don't make it to the God of heaven. Because he paid two streets with gold. Yeah. Yeah. That's an indictment against God, a vow of poverty. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You just do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. He tells you to sell something, stop it. Tells you to give something, give it. Just He's the counselor. Nobody can tell you what to do, but the counselor will. You know, that's what got, got a problem because started, you know, Christians started telling other people what they needed to do and what you yeah. don't need to do. Yeah. Know the counselor. He lives inside of you and he wants to speak to you and help you. He wants to provide abundance in every year. Abundance of healing. I got so much healing, I got to pray for somebody. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father, for a manifestation. Oh, Jesus. For a manifestation. Oh, Father, it's yeah. your desire, even more than ours, that you would manifest yourself in the church in this hour. We need a manifestation of your presence and of your glory. Father, we thank you that your glory begin to fall on those that are hungry and those that are praying and those that are asking, Lord, that you would move in our midst. Oh, the day is over, Lord God, where your people have kicked you out of church because a new day has risen. A new hour has come for a manifestation of God. A manifestation of your glory and of your presence. Oh, yes. And in your glory, it's in your glory, the glory of the Lord. Your glory, your glory, the glory of the Lord. Oh, let it rain. Yes. Let it rain in our midst. Let it rain. Let it rain. Without your spirit, Lord, fill us once again. Do 
Your patience, we give you 